I asked my sister for help setting up my studio, who has a great eye for all things design and organization, and the pegboard was her idea. It's so functional and it's become a key feature of the space because it's the first thing you see when you walk in. I'm definitely an out of sight, out of mind kind of person, so I try to have as much of my supplies on display as I can, which also motivates me to use them. I think my favorite addition to the studio this year was my little DIY bucket sink. I saw the little pump being used in a toddler's play kitchen online and I knew it could be a perfect little brush washing station with a few tweaks. I bought a cheap table and cut a hole in the top for the sink bucket. Then I got a bigger bucket for the reservoir underneath. The little pump pulls water from the big bucket into the little one. It's not as good as an actual sink of course, but for someone who lets brushes pile up, or if I need a quick jar of water for a painting lesson, that's a perfect home studio solution. And I've really fallen in love with it. My cutting board table is also one of my favorite studio items. I found the giant cutting board with my mom, who's an avid quilter, at a local fabric store, and we got one each. The tabletop was made to fit the cutting board perfectly, and the table legs are from IKEA. It's perfect for cutting paper for all kinds of collage. This past year, I've really grown to appreciate a morning studio session, especially because I consider all different times of the day morning, depending on what the rest of my day looks like. I teach art to college students, so some days, especially when I'm on a deadline, I get up early before class to paint. But I'm definitely not an early bird, so my favorite days are when I can sleep in a little and then have a few slow hours in the studio before the rest of my day takes over. These morning sessions go more smoothly when I take some time in the night to plan or sketch on my iPad so that I know what my next steps are before I even start my studio time. I've been trying to create a bit of a studio ritual to help get me in the zone once I'm here, like a cup of something yummy or making the space smell good, often with peppermint or orange, something to energize me. I also love listening to audiobooks and music in the studio. Choosing an album and playing it the whole way through is almost like a timer to mark how long I've been working. I wouldn't call it a resolution, but my goal for the new year is to get back into my little book habit. I've gone through phases of keeping a little notebook on me at all times to write down ideas, take notes of things I'm learning, and map out plans. I started this year with a new little blue book. My favorite little books have blank pages and hard covers. This purple book is my most recent one, with pages full of notes from past projects and ideas. I sometimes use them for sketching, but I often prefer to write out my ideas with the occasional doodle to accompany them. I've got sections here written by other people, like my friend Natalie, because I brainstorm lots of ideas when we're together, and her penmanship is a lot neater than mine. This is my first little book from art school. I used it so much I had to tape the spine back together. It has sketches and plans, and it's really fun to look back and see all my thoughts as I was learning so much. I made this little map of my room on a cutting mat when I first moved in, and it's helped me plan things out so I don't hurt my back moving a table to a spot it doesn't actually fit as often as I otherwise would. I've got the wall on the left side set up for storage in my little DIY sink. In the middle I've got two tables pushed together to be a big workstation for cutting and sketching. I keep a glass palette topped paint cart in the corner. There's a shelf halfway up on the wall on this side which is also great for storage. And I try to keep this space empty so I can paint directly on the wall and floor. I've covered the floor in foam tiles so the real floor underneath is protected and it's comfier to stand on. I've got paper storage on the wall here, and I've also got storage underneath these tables. I'm a perpetual furniture rearranger. I move things around in my studio a lot, 
So this is just a snapshot of how it looks right now. I think a space should be flexible as needs and ideas change. So I've had these things in all sorts of different arrangements. I used to have the tables in this kind of L shape in the middle of the room. I've had the big table under the window and taken one of the little tables out with the other one up against the painting wall. I've had the big cutting table underneath the pegboard, but it's so large I found it hard to reach my supplies there. And I've had both tables floating in the middle of the room, but I found I needed more floor space for painting. The way it's set up works for me right now. I'll probably change it next week, just for fun. It's good to shake things up. Sometimes when I feel the urge to move things around, I'll just take these pieces and rearrange them to see if it works. It's nice to be able to play with this little map whenever I have a new idea for a studio arrangement so I can try it out before I move everything around. Although sometimes I'll end up moving the furniture anyway. 